Well, good morning. Welcome to each and every one of you. My name is Matt Yon. If we haven't had the chance to meet this morning, but it's so good to be with you in worship this morning. I do want to remind you of a couple things that are happening in the life of the church. One is this Wednesday. Um, is a continuation of our uh, Lenten services, which uh, this Wednesday will be Irvin Plowden. Irvin came out of this church. St. John's has a history of sending folks into the ministry, so I hope you'll join us at 1215 this Wednesday um, as uh, Irvin delivers the word. Uh, next Sunday is a new member Sunday. If you've been thinking about becoming a part of St. John's, whether in the 9 o'clock service, 11 o'clock service, I'd love to talk to you um, about what membership means here at St. John's and hopefully can get you plugged in. And then I'm pre-advertising something on the uh, 28th of March, which is Monday, Thursday, which is the Thursday of Holy Week. March 28th at 6.30 p.m., we're going to have a full service uh, with the, uh, with the uh, uh, Last Supper drama in the middle of the service. I hope you will pray about what your role will be in it, primarily from the standpoint as we begin to pray for God's Spirit to be evident in that service, but more than anything else, to pray about who you will invite to be a part of that service. Um, it's Monday, Thursday services. I've done them differently each year of my ministry and 30 plus years of almost 30 years of, of ministry. And I look forward to Monday, Thursday because each year is just a little bit different. So I hope you'll uh, put that on your calendar. It's here at 630 in the sanctuary and go ahead and pray about someone that you can invite to be a part of it. So those are the primary announcements I have for you today. If we can bow for a moment of prayer, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we're truly grateful that we're coming into your presence today. We thank you for the, the rain that you provided this week to refresh your earth. But as we look forward to those spring flowers and a new season that is upon us very shortly, help us to not lose sight of those things that are important in our life, of family and friends, of relationship. But more than anything else, Father, help us to worship you in spirit and truth every single day that you give us breath. And today, as we unpack your word from your holy book of Psalms, help us to realize again how much you love and care for us in a real and personal way. It's in Jesus' name I do pray, and all of God's people do say, amen. Good morning. Our basketball season came to a close last weekend, and what a season it was. Our basketball program saw tremendous growth thanks to the support of the Congregation of St. John's and our dedicated coaches. This season, we had 10 teams ranging from ages 6 to 17. We had one of the largest numbers of teams in the Christian Basketball Association with 80 players, 15 coaches, and of course, our countless fans. We were able to give scholarships to nine players and fully support our senior basketball team because of the generosity of St. John's. At this time, I'd like to ask any of our coaches who are in worship with us to stand up. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> coaches, we'd like to thank you for devoting your time and talents to supporting the children of St. John's, for not only teaching them the fundamentals of basketball, but showing them what true Christ-like behavior is on and off the court. I'd also like to ask any of our players to stand up. Let's also give them a round of applause. <laughs> players, you all did a wonderful job representing St. John's, and we are so proud of you. For the basketball skills you have developed over this season, and for the way that you represent the best of us by helping your teammates, playing with kindness, and being humble. We'd also like to thank a few members of our youth group, Gracie Morgan, Davis Capel, and Harris Heckard, for being referees and scoreboard attendants for the games we hosted at St. John's. They did a great job managing the, the games and helping our youngest players learn the ropes with patience and understanding. Lastly, we'd like to thank you, the congregation, for supporting the children and youth of St. John's in so many ways. Thank you for creating a space where children can fellowship and play together while living out our call to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you. And before Matt escapes away, Matt and Emily Bell were the behind the scenes people for the sports ministry here. We all give them a round of applause as well.
as you are able. Would you please rise, rise in body and in spirit for our call to worship. We stand in need of the presence of God. Our lives so easily become corrupted by our own greed. But the Lord has heard our cries and calls us forward on this journey. The Lord guide our steps. Come, let us worship God who is always with us. Let us open our hearts to the healing, restoring love. Friends, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
Yet we are justified by the gift of God's grace through the redemption that is ours in Christ Jesus. Trusting in God's mercy, let us cons confess our sins. When we set up barriers that prevent <coughs> others from knowing the truth of your love, forgive us and break down those walls. When we set up barriers in our own minds and lives that keep us from knowing the truth of your love, break down our walls with your grace. When we are confused by the world's wisdom, break through our muddled minds and shine the clarity of your teachings. Draw us ever closer to you, to one another, and to the beauty of your wisdom in your love, O oh God. Amen. <coughs> Friends, Christ reduces the barriers we set up to dust and ashes that blow away to nothing in the power of his mercy and his grace. We are no longer divided or separated, but united in the wisdom and the love of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved children of God, we are one in God's wisdom. No barrier can separate us from God or from one another. With joy, let us share signs of our connection as we pass the peace of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share the signs of peace with one another. Would you remain standing for the reading of the gospel? This morning our gospel lesson comes from the book of John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Hear now these words. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of the cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money, the money changers, and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciple remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he said. Then they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Good morning. Happy Sunday, friends. How are you? Good. I'm glad to see you here today. My question for you today is, have you ever been angry? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All of us get angry. What about Jesus? Did Jesus get angry? Yes. yes. Even Jesus got angry. He got angry because he walked into a church and he saw people shopping like it was a mall. Can you, selling stuff. Can you imagine if when we walked downstairs there was a whole mall? That would be crazy, right? <laughs> it seems like a good idea, right? It seems convenient, but it wouldn't be because it might distract us from what we should be doing, which is what? What should we be doing while we're here? Listening and listening. Listening to what? Yeah. Not hurt. To not, like, to, like, take more money to ourselves. Right. With our money, we should give God what is God's, right? And not to the people who are just trying to be greedy, Right? That's why Jesus was mad. Because people weren't treating church how it should be. Because we come here to this place to hear about God's love and to learn how we can take God's love out into the world. So when we get angry, we ask God to turn that anger into ways that we can solve the problem that we're having. Each Sunday, in, as we get closer to Easter, we have an Easter egg. Does anybody remember what, the first, what was in the first egg? The candle. The, candle of light. the candle. And why do we have the candle? So it can light up. Okay, so it can light up. Very good. So that it reminds us that Christ is with us and he is the light of the world. So we have this one. Then we have the pen because we remember that we have Christ pinned on our hearts okay. to stay with us oh, no, we got to make sure that one doesn't get loose and then the egg wasn't big enough it wouldn't fit in here so what do you think this could be any guesses a blanket how did you know that was such a good guess it is a sock it's a clean one, I promise. <laughs> Fresh from the laundry yesterday. Yes, I love your tights. Oh, they're so pretty. So we have a sock to remind us that God has given us all that we need and to remind us to pray for people who may not have everything that they need and to, for God to help us to help those people. We're supposed to help people in any ways that we can. If we, have socks. if we have extra socks and people need socks, we give them those socks. So will you pray with me? We're going to do a new kind of prayer today. It's a breath prayer. Sometimes I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. So sometimes when you're angry, it helps to take a deep breath, right? Can you breathe in with me? And can you breathe out? Breathe in one more time. So, we breathe in, breathe in the things of God, breathe out the things not of God. So, breathe in the things of God, breathe out the things not of God. Amen. All right, if you are in kindergarten or younger, you can head with me to Children's Church.
I want to take a moment and say thank you to our bell choir. They are amazing. That is a gift. It is a talent to be able to do that. And you make such beautiful, beautiful music. Thank you very much. What a blessing to be here on this day. The sunshine is inside this room. It may be cloudy and dreary outside, but it is beautiful in here. Let us come together. Let us be in prayer to our God. God of life and love. God of sunshine and rain. God who knows what we need before we even know ourselves. God is there to answer our questions before we have even formed them. God is there who will pick us up on our way down to the ground. Thank you for being that faithful God. Thank you for walking with us through times of trials and struggles, times when it seems like it's just pouring down and we can't catch a break. And you are there walking with us by our side, faithful as always. Forgive us, O oh God, when we do not see your presence, but only look back and go, aha, that was you. God, we come with all that we are this day, all the things of the past list, this past week, the things that are not done yet that we were going to do, the things that we're thinking about next week and all that will need to be done. But we come to be present in this time and in this space, offering our hearts and our lives to you. So, oh God, thank you for being present not only in the scripture, in the words, in the singing, in the music, but in the silence. For it is in Jesus that we come. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward and to receive our offerings this morning. I thank you for all the ways in which you support this church and for your financial commitment. Your tithing back to God and your gifts to this church and its many ministries. You heard this morning about one of the great ministries that's come out of this church, and that's that basketball program. And the noise that they fill that gym with is a joyful, joyful noise. And lives are touched and friendships are made. You can give through the offering plate. You can give through electronic giving, and you can give by mailing in a check or coming in during office hours. But I thank you for your generosity. And this morning, I want to draw your attention to the bulletin and the doxology that will follow to pay attention to the words because it is specific to our season of Lent. Thank you for your gifts.
Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we're truly grateful for all the ways that you reveal your presence to us, for the gift of time together, for the very breath that we breathe. But more than anything else, Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, because of his ultimate sacrifice of his life, that we can have life and have it abundantly. May out of our abundance we give freely, and out of our gifts, may they touch people's lives throughout this world. We ask all these things today in Jesus' name, and all of God's people do say, amen. You may be seated. About four times out of any, any given year in a, any Methodist church that I've served, I spend a little time in the book of Psalms. And this is one of those particular Sundays because I dearly love the book of Psalms. There's 150 different uh, chapters or books or songs or whatever term that you want to use. And today is one of my favorites, as many are, uh, Psalm 19. It's written by David. Hear these words from God's holy word. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They have no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of the chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart, and the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much more pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them is great reward. But who can discern their own arrows? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sin. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of all great transgressions. And may the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, if I were to go into your home today and I would begin to look through your vinyl collection, your playlist on your Spotify, even your Amazon music, or maybe when I turn on your car in your garage, what would be the song list that is played? What would be the songs that I would hear? Would there be things like Jimi Hendrix? Would there be Def Leppard? Would there be Metallica? Would there be Iron Maiden? Would there be the Beach Boys? What would the song list be? And if someone were to put together the songs of your life, what might they say? And how might they speak of those around you? And the book of Psalms is no different. It's Jesus' hymn book. It's Jesus' playlist before God. It's the very words that Jesus would sing. It's the very words that Jesus would say. And it would be the very words that he would recite on his way to the cross. And maybe such words from the cross, if you study even deeper. And those very songs are the, the hymn of Jesus' soul, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what about us today? What would our songs be? You've heard me say time and time again that I love to sing and I love to turn the radio up loud. My sacred place is the car. And I'm not praying for those around me, although I need to sometimes. But most of the time I'm singing so loud that most people would probably be, will you please be quiet? Will you please keep your silence? But what would be those songs of contemporary worship that you would listen to? Because if you go in any car, whether I own it or I rent it or I borrow it, guess what happens by the end of the trip in that particular car? It's on Christian music. Because I want all the good stuff that's going into my brain and all the good stuff going into my heart. Now today, what are the songs that you can sing from memory? I'm sure if I started humming some songs along, you would probably join in, and most of them would be from the radio. 
But if I were to push you just a little bit further and say, all right, well, let's pull out this 1989 classic called the United Methodist Hymnal. How many songs would you know? Most people know less than 10%. And what I would say to most of you, including our choir and our choir director, is play them a little faster, please. Can I get an amen? I'll pay for that one later, but I said it in the 9 o'clock, and I promised I would do it here. But in essence, our worship is supposed to be joy-filled and lively. Our contemporary worship that we play and sing and all like that, how many of those can we sing from memory? Most people only know 10% of this hymnal. So if there's between six and 700 songs, depending on who's counting, 60 to 70 songs that you could do from memory right now. And Jesus, the Lord of the universe, could do all 150 psalms from memory. And you say, he's God, I surely can't be after God. But you can begin to hide away those words of Scripture in your heart. Because in essence, the book of Psalm is God's playlist. And I hope by the end of this that you'll be more encouraged to go into looking into God's playlist known as the book of Psalms. And David, our writer today, talks about God's creation in verses 1 through 6. He says, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They have no words. No sound is heard from them. Do you realize that God's creation is emanating sounds all the time, whether we're aware of it or not? Our human ears only hear a very limited amount of sounds. But if you get everything down to the subatomic level, each and everything offers praise to God in every way possible. What about you here today? If we look at Genesis 1 and 2, we know all too well the particular scripture. We know Genesis well because it's an ordered story. It's what the engineers love because it follows a line by line by line, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day five, day six, day seven, order. But in the midst of that, in 26 through 28, it reminds us that we are created in God's image. Do you understand that? Do you understand that you're created in God's image? Every time you look in the mirror, every time you look at it before you go to bed, you're created in God's image. And the people around this room, as you look at each other, you're created in God's image. And God cares about you, and God knows everything about you. And even if we don't like the person that's beside us or across the room from us, that person, he or she, is created in God's image. Can I get an amen? Because too often than not, we forget that God's created each and every one of us. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to hang around a campfire, and I love s'mores, guys. I can tell you, I can eat my my weight in s'mores. But Genesis 2 is a story that's intended to be told around a campfire. So the next time you're in God's creation and you're admiring his handiwork, sit around a campfire and read Genesis 2, because that was the way it was taught to the Hebrew people. And both accounts remind us of God's creation, folks, that's emanating and praising God every single day of every single moment. When was the last time you stopped and smelled the roses, so to speak? When was the last time you paid attention to God's creation? Because he is a master craftsman. He can do some amazing things. When was the last time you were in awe of a sunrise or a sunset? Because God paints a beautiful one every single day, whether we're paying attention or not. Now, three particular points in my life where I've just experienced God's creation in the fullness of time and the fullness of the situation was at the beginning of the Appalachian Trail in a place called Dahlonega, Georgia. If you've ever been there, there's a lot of banks and there's not a lot else. Can I get an amen for that? There's nothing there other than the beginning of the trail. But I can remember that first night hiking a part of the AT and looking all around because there was no light pollution. There was no nothing to hinder the view. And we got to this cliffside in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. And we could look up and see for miles all the stars, those blinking, those that are bright, those are not so bright, the shooting stars, and everything was happening. And we were sitting there praising God for his presence in that simple moment. Or maybe it was a time in Brazil where my friend Tiago, we were having this great celebration time. We were sitting around the piano. We were worshiping God. 
and he whispers in my ear, he says, Matt, I want to show you something. I'm like, Giago, we're here, we're worshiping. Why do I need to go anywhere else? He said, come. And we walked out to this back porch in this simple, modest house. And he pointed in the sky and he said, look. And I looked and I didn't really see anything. He said, look harder. And I said, I still don't see what you're trying to get me to see. He said, look right here. And for the first time in my life, I could see the constellation that only happens in the southern hemisphere, the southern cross. And for just a moment, we had worship. Or when I was an eight-year-old child in the grand metropolis of Melbourne, Florida, my uncle took me out in the middle of nowhere where there were no lights and there seemed to be nothing around, and I thought, boy, this is a crazy way to end my life. But in the midst of that darkness, he took a flashlight and he walked us from the car to this place called an observatory. And for the next four hours of my life, I was able to see every planet in our solar system, including the one that some of you say is just a moon called Pluto. But I got to see each and every one of them. My perspective changed from the standpoint is the God of the universe created all of this, folks. Every single bit of it. And it's declaring his glory every single day. And we're the ones that need to slow down and stop and to see and experience. And then David shifts gears in the midst of the story and he talks about the word. Now for us, we have the joy and the advantage of having the New Testament and the Old Testament both. And we can look at God's holy word in completion. For David, he was just looking at the first five books because that's what was written at the time. And what's so interesting is he says that the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul, the statutes of the Lord trustworthy, making wise the simple or open-minded. And then, of course, he also talked about the awe and the reverence of the Lord as pure and enduring forever. Are you here today putting and hiding the Scripture of God in your heart? Could you say those very words that David said, all the different descriptors that he uses talking about the Word of God? And how is, it, how is the role of the Scripture in your life? Are you daily hiding the Scripture in your heart? Are you daily reading it with the anticipation that God's going to do something new and exciting by reading His Holy Word? You can remember one of the early funerals that I was allowed to preach at, and it was my Aunt Joy. And Joy was my, one of those people in my life that I dearly loved, and she wanted everybody to know what God's holy scripture meant. He, she thought it was sharper than any two-edged sword that it can cut, and it can t show you and ex make you experience every part of God's creation and, and who God is. And I remember standing up there because I, her most important things were all these lines that were underlined in her New Testament of the Bible reminding her about the word of God. The word of God is complete. The word of God is this. The word of God is this. And you could see in her life that she had hidden it away in her heart. What about you? And this next part is not a whole lot of fun, folks, because it's the verses 12 and 13. And maybe you can relate to some of these words. It says, who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden thoughts. Think about that for a minute. If you're having trouble wondering what your hidden thoughts are, ask your spouse. They know your blind spots. Ask your best friend. They know what's wrong with you. Ask them what you are situationally unaware of. They will tell you, I promise. But in essence, the Word of God is one that can remind us again and again about our hidden, thought, uh, our hidden faults. And what's also interesting, it says, keep your servant also from willful sins. And many of us know those willful sins, do we not? We know those sins that we know time and time again carry us down a road that we do not want to travel on. And Paul pens these words in Romans chapter 7. He says this of the repentant follower of Christ. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do I do not do, but what I hate I do. Can anybody relate? Because each and every one of us, when we, are, when we stand before God, we can say that we are messed up that we have failed in so many ways not to be the follower that Christ has called us to be. And many of us are situationally unaware. 
Now, I've shared with you my love of music. Well, there's one station in particular that I dearly love, and I don't need any emails about it, so stick with the illustration. I don't need any emails on how to fix my radio problem. I know how to do it. It's called an app and some other things. But bear with me just a moment. 91.9 is K-Love. It's one of my favorite stations to listen to. But the unfortunate thing in Rock Hill, South Carolina, it lasts for about three-mile radius. It just does not work very well. And I'll be jamming along to a song, and I get to the edge of where that reception is, and you begin to hear that, what, that <laughs> pop, and it's like, no, God, I want to finish the song. I want to finish the song. Can I finish the song, God? Crackle, crackle, crackle. And then you get to that point in the reception, and some of you don't understand this all too well. You get that, what we call that white noise, and it goes, shh. Some of you never make it to the white noise, right? Because you're already finding that next station that you can listen to whether you like it or not. But each and every one of us, if we're honest, we're somewhere on that spectrum. We're either right there loving and praising God, and we've got full reception, and we're listening to God fully in what he has to say to us. Some of us are at the edge of where that reception is, and we're beginning to hear his fading voice because we're focused on too many things of the world and not enough on God. And yet some of us are still hearing the white noise even today that are sitting in the sanctuary today. And I don't know where you are, but what's happened in this particular situation, this particular scenario, is the people that are hearing white noises have gotten very far away from God. And they need to return to Him fully. Those that are hearing the snap, crackle, and pop, so to speak, you maybe got God on some days, and some days you kind of set Him aside. And the ones that are fully praising God, praise Jesus that you can find the joy that, that's talked about in this psalm today. But no matter where you find yourself in this particular spectrum, all that you have to do is to turn towards him and return to where that music is, return to where that worship is, return to where that joy is for your life. Where are you today? Verse 14, one of those that I've heard from many preachers through the years, but I'm going to give some of them grief that are friends of mine that are retired now. They say this right before they preach. They say, may the words of my mouth and usually they say, and the meditation. But what David says is, this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So the question I have for you today is, what role does God the creator have in your life? What role does scripture play in your heart? And what is your relationship to him? Because in essence, this is what this particular psalm brings into question in our life. And I hope that you can pray 14 with fervence. It says, may the words of my mouth and the meditations uh, and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we're truly grateful that you give us God's holy word and that you've given us a book of Psalms that your son and our Savior Jesus Christ read on a regular basis and put into memory the very words that were penned by your inspiration and your Holy Spirit. Today, may we not lose sight of how you call us to be in relationship with you, that you put your creation all around us, and that we're supposed to have an awe and reverence towards you. Help us to put away those sins, those things that separate us from you, Father, more than anything else, may our words and our heart be acceptable in your sight today and every day. It's in Jesus' name I do pray and all of God's people do say, amen. This morning we come to our time of Holy Communion where we celebrate God's presence with us, where Jesus gathered with his 12 disciples. Each and every one of them would betray him. Each and every one of them would fall away at some point. But yet in the midst of that, Jesus still did a simple act of washing feet, of reminding them of everything that God had done in their lives and for, to, for his disciples to experience the Last Supper just a little bit differently. So will you please stand as we experience the great thanksgiving. The words are in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You have given us commandments through which we can live our lives in faith and truth. And so with your people on earth and all the company in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. His ways were foolish to the wise, weak to the strong, and through him you showed a foolishness wiser than human wisdom and strength greater than human strength. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By his baptism... Of, by, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to the church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant. On the night in which he was given, to give himself up for each of us, he gave thanks to you. He took the bread, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he gave thanks to you, and said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, that all might be illumined by the light of Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in, in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in his final victory, and we feast his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit today, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to ask those who agreed to serve today if they'll come forward at this time. In just a moment, the ushers will direct you forward to receive the elements. In the United Methodist Church, the table is open to all those who earnestly seek to live in love and relationship and who are willing to let go of those things that keep them from God. We will give you a piece of bread. We'll break off a piece of bread and we'll say, this is Christ's body broken for you. And then someone will extend the cup and say, this is Christ's blood given for you. I hope you'll take the bread and dip it in the cup and receive God's mercy and grace that's given to each and every one of you. table set. Won't you please come?
If you'll join me in the prayer after communion that's printed in your bulletin, let's say it together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Help us show the world's wisdom is folly and all strength comes from you. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I do appreciate your presence here in worship today. Uh, if you feel comfortable, if you can reach out to the person to your left and right, and let's close our time in prayer. And let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we're truly grateful where we experienced your holy meal in which you've given yourself to us. May we go into this world proclaiming the good news of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we do pray, and all of God's people do say, Amen. Go in peace. Amen.